Over 72% of men misunderstand how the clitoris actually works. And the problem isn't lack of effort, it's lack of accurate anatomical education. In fact, most popular diagrams show less than 10% of the clitoris. The rest, the part that actually drives arousal, is completely hidden beneath the surface. As a urologist, I see this misunderstanding all the time, not because men don't care, but because the medical information they were given growing up was incomplete, outdated, or simply wrong. Studies published in journals like the Journal of Sexual Medicine, Nature Reviews Urology, and the British Medical Journal have all pointed out the same issue. The clitoris is one of the most complex, understudied, and most misrepresented anatomical structures in human sexuality. Most men, and honestly, many women, were taught that the clitoris is just the external glands, a tiny visible spot. But anatomically, that's only the tip of a much larger branching organ. According to research by Dr. Helen O'Connell, a leading urologist whose anatomical work has reshaped modern understanding, the clitoris extends internally with two crura, legs, and two vestibular bulbs that surround the vaginal opening. This entire network contains over 8,000 nerve fibers, making it the most densely innervated structure in the human body. But here's the key insight. Understanding the clitoris isn't about technique, it's about physiology. If you don't understand blood flow dynamics, nerve sensitivity, arousal timing, and psychological context, you miss the foundation of how female pleasure actually works. And because most men have never been shown an accurate 3D model of the clitoris, they misinterpret responses, misread signals, and often apply pressure or pacing that doesn't match how the organ functions biologically. This leads to frustration on both sides and a completely avoidable breakdown in communication. So in this video, I'm going to break down what the clitoris actually is, anatomically, not mythically, why most men underestimate its size and sensitivity, how arousal really works from a vascular and neurological standpoint, and how understanding the science leads to better connection, better communication, and, yes, better intimacy, all medically accurate, all research-backed, and all explained in a calm, respectful, educational way. Before we continue, if you appreciate clear, science-based explanations from a medical professional, make sure you subscribe. I post daily breakdowns that help you understand intimacy with maturity, confidence, and real physiology. Literal anatomy and physiology, what men were never taught. Despite being one of the most significant structures in female sexual physiology, the clitoris is still one of the least understood. And the biggest reason is simple. For decades, medical diagrams were incomplete. Until the late 1990s, even standard anatomy textbooks showed only the external glands, which represents just a tiny fraction of the full organ. As a urologist, I can tell you this limited perspective has shaped generations of misunderstanding. Modern imaging techniques, MRI, 3D ultrasound, and detailed dissections like those published by Dr. Helen O'Connell in the Journal of Urology have revealed the truth. The clitoris is a large, three-dimensional erectile structure, far more complex than most people were ever caught. 1. The external portion, only the beginning. The small, visible part at the top of the vulva is called the clitoral glands. This is the external tip of the organ, highly sensitive because of its dense network of sensory nerves. But anatomically, it's only the surface marker of something much larger underneath. Think of it as the tip of an iceberg, helpful for orientation, but not representative of the true scale. 2. The internal crura, the hidden legs. Extending downward from the glands are two internal legs, called the crura, each measuring several centimeters in length. These structures are made of erectile tissue, similar to what we see in the penis. When arousal begins, blood flow increases through the internal pudendal arteries, causing these crura to swell. This swelling isn't visible from the outside, but it significantly changes sensitivity and sensation. 3. The vestibular bulbs, the most overlooked part. 
Perhaps the most misunderstood aspect of clitoral anatomy is the vestibular bulbs, two large bean-shaped masses of erectile tissue that sit on either side of the vaginal opening. These bulbs engorge with blood during arousal and actually tighten and lift the entire pelvic floor area, enhancing sensitivity. Research published in Clinical Anatomy highlights that these bulbs play a major role in overall arousal responses, yet most men don't even know they exist. 4. Nerve Density – Why Sensitivity Varies The clitoris contains over 8,000 sensory nerve fibers, but here's the nuance. Those nerves aren't evenly distributed, and sensitivity varies from person to person. Some research in the Journal of Sexual Medicine suggests that the surrounding tissues, including the bulbs and crura, contribute significantly to pleasurable sensations, not just the external glands. This is why some women prefer indirect stimulation or a slower buildup, it aligns with how the nerves and erectile tissues respond biologically. Why understanding this matters? When men only think of the clitoris as a small button, they unintentionally miss the full physiology. The organ responds gradually through blood flow, swelling, nerve activation, and psychological arousal. Understanding this isn't about technique. It's about aligning expectations with biology, leading to better communication, less pressure, and more comfort for both partners. 2. The most common misconceptions men have and what the science actually shows. When it comes to female anatomy, the clitoris is easily the most misunderstood structure, and not because men aren't trying, but because the information they were exposed to was incomplete or flat out incorrect. As a urologist, I've seen how these misconceptions shape expectations, create anxiety, and lead to unnecessary confusion in relationships. So let's break down the most common myths and what research actually says. Misconception 1. The clitoris is small. The reality. Anatomically, the external glands is small, yes, but the full clitoral structure is far larger, often measuring 9 to 12 centimeters internally when you include the crura and vestibular bulbs. A landmark study by O'Connell et al. in the Journal of Urology proved that the clitoris is a deep, branching organ, similar in complexity to the penis, and made largely of erectile tissue. So the idea that it's tiny is scientifically outdated. Misconception 2. Direct pressure is always good. The reality. Biology says otherwise. The external glands is the most nerve-dense part of the entire organ. For some women, especially at the beginning of arousal, direct stimulation is too intense, even uncomfortable. This isn't about preference, it's neurological. Studies in the Journal of Sexual Medicine show that optimal stimulation shifts through stages of arousal, beginning with gentler, indirect approaches as blood flow increases and sensitivity changes. This explains why slower, gradual buildup aligns better with the way the clitoral tissues respond physiologically. Misconception 3. Porn shows how it works. The reality. Pornography presents a visually simplified and often incorrect portrayal of female anatomy. Research from the International Journal of Impotence Research shows that porn rarely reflects real arousal timelines or anatomical responses. The clitoris doesn't respond instantly. It follows a vascular process involving swelling of the bulbs, dilation of blood vessels, and gradual nerve sensitization. None of this is portrayed accurately on screen. Misconception 4. All women respond the same way. The reality. Clitoral sensitivity, nerve distribution, and preferred types of stimulation vary widely. This isn't psychological, it's physiological. MRI studies from human brain mapping show that individual women have different sensory mapping patterns connected to the clitoris, meaning their brains process sensations slightly differently. This is why one method doesn't fit all, and why communication matters far more than assumptions. Misconception 5. More pressure equals more pleasure. The reality. The clitoris is an erectile organ. During early arousal, it sits closer to the surface and is more sensitive. As blood flow increases, the tissues swell and the glands may shift position slightly. This change in anatomy alters what feels comfortable. Understanding this helps men adjust to the biological sequence rather than forcing a fixed approach. Why this matters? When men rely on myths instead of medical facts, they unintentionally work against female physiology. 
But when they understand the science, nerve behavior, blood flow, arousal timing, they align with the body's natural processes, and that leads to comfort, connection, communication, and a far better experience for both partners. Three, what science says about arousal and response, the biological timeline most men never learn. One of the biggest reasons men misunderstand female pleasure is because they assume the arousal process works the same way for everyone. But biologically, male and female arousal timelines are very different, and research confirms this repeatedly. Understanding this timeline, the vascular, neurological, and hormonal sequence that unfolds, allows men to align with physiology rather than unintentionally working against it. Let's break down what the science actually shows. Phase 1. The brain starts before the body. Arousal begins in the brain, not the genitals. Functional MRI studies published in the Journal of Sexual Medicine show that emotional comfort, trust, relaxation, and psychological safety activate the hypothalamus and limbic regions before the genital tissues respond. This means a woman's body doesn't simply switch on. Her nervous system needs to feel safe, present, and connected. When the brain sends the right signals, blood flow increases through the internal pudendal arteries and the clitoral erectile tissues begin to respond. This step is why rushing creates frustration. The body literally hasn't transitioned into the physiological state needed for pleasure yet. Phase 2. Blood flow and clitoral engorgement. Once the brain initiates the process, blood begins filling the clitoral network, the glands, the crua, legs, and the vestibular bulbs. A study in clinical anatomy highlights that these bulbs can double in size during arousal, tightening the entrance of the vagina and heightening sensation. This engorgement changes sensitivity dramatically. At the beginning, tissues can feel overly sensitive. As blood flow increases, pressure becomes more comfortable. Once fully engorged, rhythmic or consistent stimulation becomes far more pleasurable. Most men don't realize they're interacting with a changing organ, one whose responsiveness evolves over minutes. Phase 3. Nerve Activation and Sensory Mapping As the clitoral tissues swell, the sensory nerves activate progressively. Neuroscience research from human brain mapping shows that clitoral stimulation lights up some of the most complex sensory processing regions in the brain. But these nerves respond best when they're not overstimulated too early. This is why indirect touch, warmth, and gradual buildup align more accurately with how the nervous system reaches peak sensitivity. It isn't just preference, it's neurobiology. Phase 4 the plateau when response becomes consistent. Once tissues are engorged and nerve activity has stabilized, the clitoris enters the plateau phase where sensations converge and intensify. This is where consistency matters more than speed or intensity. A study in the archives of sexual behavior found that during this phase, predictable pacing is far more effective than sudden changes. The body is primed for sustained stimulation, not constant variation. Why men need to understand this timeline? When men assume women warm up at the same speed or in the same way, they unintentionally skip biological steps. But when they understand the science, the vascular buildup, the nerve sensitization, the brain-body connection, they become more patient, more attuned, and more effective partners. 4. What men should understand if they want to be better partners, health, communication, and real physiology. A common pattern I see as a urologist is that many men genuinely want to be better partners, but they're working with incomplete information about female physiology, and because of that, they often rely on assumptions instead of biology. When you replace assumptions with medical understanding and combine that with real communication, everything changes not just the physical connection, but the emotional one as well. Here are the core principles science consistently highlights. 1. Comfort and safety aren't extras, they're biological requirements. Psychological comfort isn't a mood booster, it's a biological activator. Studies published in the Journal of Sexual Medicine show that when a woman feels emotionally safe, her parasympathetic nervous system becomes dominant. 
This system controls relaxation, blood flow, lubrication, and clitoral engorgement. When anxiety, pressure, or tension enters the picture, the body shifts toward the sympathetic fight-or-flight state. Blood flow decreases, sensitivity changes, and arousal becomes harder. This isn't emotional, it's neurological. The best partners understand that comfort accelerates physiology. Two, communication improves response because it reduces guesswork. A study from the Archives of Sexual Behavior found that couples who communicate openly about touch, pacing, and comfort show significantly higher physiological arousal responses. Why? Because communication removes guessing, which removes anxiety, which improves blood flow and sensory processing. Many men fear communication will ruin the moment. But in reality, communication aligns action with anatomy. Even simple questions like, does this pressure feel okay? Want me to go slower or stay right here? Signal attentiveness, which directly improves the arousal timeline. Three, sensitivity changes throughout arousal, adapt instead of applying one method. One of the biggest mistakes men make is believing a woman will enjoy the same type of stimulation from start to finish. But physiologically, sensitivity shifts as blood flow increases. Early arousal, higher sensitivity. Mid-arousal, deeper pressure often becomes comfortable. Plateau phase, consistent rhythm becomes most effective. This variability is confirmed in research from clinical anatomy and human brain mapping. Better partners pay attention to micro-responses, breath changes, muscle tension, body movement, and adjust naturally. Four, patience isn't being slow, it's following the body's timeline. On average, women require more time to reach full genital engorgement compared to men. This isn't preference, it's vascular biology. Taking more time doesn't mean dragging things out. It means aligning with the organ's anatomy. Think of it like warming up a complex system. The more thorough the buildup, the more responsive the tissues become and the more fulfilling the shared experience. Five, the best partners focus on the experience, not the outcome. When men approach intimacy with a performance mindset, pressure increases for both partners. But when the focus shifts to comfort, communication, and emotional connection, physiology follows naturally, and the clitoral network responds far more predictably. Being a better partner isn't about technique. It's about understanding biology and creating an environment where the body can respond the way it's meant to. Takeaway Summary Understanding the clitoris isn't about learning techniques, it's about finally seeing the full anatomy and the real biology behind female arousal. Here's what the science shows. Most men misunderstand the clitoris because education focuses only on the tiny external glands, ignoring the much larger internal structure. The clitoris is a three-dimensional erectile organ with crura and vestibular bulbs that respond gradually through blood flow and swelling, not instantly. Sensitivity shifts throughout arousal, which is why pressure and pacing need to adapt to each phase of the body's natural timeline. Psychological safety and comfort activate the parasympathetic system, which is essential for lubrication, blood flow, and full clitoral engagement. Communication is not optional. It aligns expectations with physiology, removes pressure, and creates the ideal conditions for the body to respond naturally. Every woman's response is unique because nerve distribution, sensory mapping, and arousal speed vary, so observation and communication are more important than assumptions. When men understand anatomy and physiology, rather than relying on myths, guesswork, or media influence, they become more confident, patient, attentive, and ultimately better partners. Science doesn't take the mystery out of intimacy. It removes the confusion and makes connection deeper, healthier, and more meaningful. If you want more medically accurate, respectful, and science-based breakdowns about intimacy and men's health, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I post daily videos that help you understand the body, improve communication, and build healthier, more confident relationships, all grounded in real medical research.